Taikaraya. Good evening. Welcome to Council Fire with the Riverwinds. We are your imperfect hosts. I'm Chief Joseph. And I'm Dr. Laurelyn Riverwind of Firekeepers International. Well, let's just start off with some, some prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, welcome to everybody to our, our fire. But most importantly, Abba Father, we just welcome you to our fire. Ruach HaKodesh, just have your way with this hour. Uh, let your Ruach flow, let times of refreshing flow, let it be a time uh, that honors and glorifies you, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I ask you, Father, that your spirit of shalom would would go through the airwaves to those listening it and needing for needing it. And Father, we just ask you that you will teach us what you want us to learn during this time. In the name of our precious Yeshua, Mashiach. Amen. Amen. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on in the world right now. Um, you know, there's the the terror attack that just took place uh, at the Parliament, and our prayers with the people of, of England and and uh, the city of London. And uh, there is persecution of the body of Mashiach all over the world, especially in the Middle East at unprecedented levels. And with things like this happening and attacks happening at home here on American soil, sometimes that spirit of fear will try to creep in in a way that uh, is detrimental to your walk, to your faith, and most importantly, to your trust. And we can't allow the enemy to win a victory in our lives by sowing fear or anxiety into our souls, into our hearts, and into our bodies. Because these things, uh, the the mind, the heart, the, the matters of the emotion play an integral role in our body's health and in our spiritual health. You know, there was, there's times when uh, our brain just goes into overload, and we just really want to share with you some of the different uh, ways that, that these ancient writings of Scripture teach us how to deal with anxiety. Uh, anxiety is also a root cause of depression, um, as well. I mean, depression is also an, an actual demonic spirit, which we'll talk about that as well. Uh, but anxiety starts off in the mind. And, I mean, right off the bat, I can think of, you know, renew your mind to the mind of Mashiach. Uh, but renewing the mind, those thought processes, how do we do that? How do we go about doing that? Um, because Yeshua said to us to be anxious for nothing. So we're living in a time when the spirit of fear is absolutely just on the warpath, literally, in the world globally. And many people operating out of fear, we understand that. Uh, but there, there is a healthy fear, and that's the fear of Yahweh. But there is a fear that comes from the enemy. And, uh, you know, the healthy fear is fear of the Lord. Fear of Yahweh. And Which opens the door to what? Wisdom. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Which we can all use more of. Yes. You know, one of the things, one of the scriptures I really love, and this is a beautiful verse that that if we could just keep this in the forefront of our minds, you know, we'd have it made, right? But it's Isaiah, Yeshua 26, verse 3. A person whose desire rests on you, you preserve in perfect peace because he trusts you. Ooh. Another version says... Um, the steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts you. Um, so, or you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Yeah. You know, I also love the, the context of this verse uh, with the verse before that talks about open up the gates that the righteous nation may enter. You know, this is, this is also a reference. It's a prophetic reference to when Mashiach comes and we see in Revelation where it says that those who do the commandments will have the right to enter into the gates and eat of the tree of life. Uh, so, so this is just a little cross-reference uh, trail that you can study based on Isaiah 26.3. Uh, because when we're walking according to Creator's commandments, when we're walking according to His set-apart ways, we do have a peace of mind that goes beyond all understanding. Now, that word... Um where it says stayed on you, his mind is stayed on you. That's from the word samach. I'm sorry, samach. 
Um, I unfortunately can't see it in the original Hebrew. I'm depending upon a um, transliteration. So I may not have the best <laughs> pronunciation here. But yeah, we know what transliterations have done to the faith. Anyway. <laughs> um, but that word is the word to, to prop. Oh, it's like Samek, a prop. Um, to reflexively to lean upon or take hold. In other words, when you're propping yourself up on him, when you're leaning on him, and there, there's that lean not on your own understanding. Who are we supposed to lean upon? We're supposed to be, our mind is supposed to be propped upon him um, because he's the one who's going to bring that peace to us. It's just, it's the same peace that Yochanan you know, it says that in, in, in the Brit Hadashah that he rested his head upon Yeshua's chest. You know, and when you're leaning upon him, when you're resting upon him, uh, then you also know his heartbeat. You know his heart. You can hear what he wants for your life because of that intimate closeness of placing your ear and leaning in towards him. Now, I will say this. There are uh, ministries out there that are committed to revealing the works of the enemy that are operating in the darkness, um, not the enemy operating in the darkness, not the ministries. Um, they are doing legitimate and good work to educate not only believers, but people in the world about current events and how they relate to uh, Scripture. But there's a point at which it becomes possible that that... Uh, that dwelling upon that for too long will feed fear and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it's important to realize that you can't continue dwelling on it, that you have to have your mind stayed on the Lord because that's where our peace comes from. Um, Joseph's sister calls calls it fear porn. <laughs> and it's um, I think that's a great term because... We might even call this radio segment that fear porn. <laughs> Because it's, it's true, it's that same addictive quality, uh, except the spirit of fear. See, fear, and I, and I know that you can speak to this, uh, especially from a from a medical standpoint. When you go into a place of fear, whether it's physical, spiritual, does your body not react? I remember from from being in the army and being in stressful situations where the fear factor increases, and your body naturally releases the epinephrine. Yes. Right, and so it becomes like an addictive. Um, you know, because when, when, when you're when you're on epinephrine, those are some of you who know how this feels like and experience, you feel superhuman, you feel strong. It's almost like your body's physical reaction to becoming stronger than the fear that's being placed upon it. That's interesting. So I, that's just what just I'm just coming out of my mouth, but I know that you could break it down better. <laughs> well, that can lead to um, overtaxing the adrenal gland, which is the gland the glands in our body. The adrenal glands are situated on the kidneys. And they are responsible for producing epinephrine, which is adrenaline. And so when that's that shock feeling that you get is your adrenal glands dumping epi, epinephrine into your body when you have that uh, stimulus that creates a fight or flight or freeze response. I like to add there is a freeze response because some people, mm -hmm. when they're confronted they with up. that, they lock up. They don't, they go, they don't fight. They go into the fetal position. They don't flight. They freeze. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But that's what that feeling is. And that's how it comes out physically. So I'm thinking that the fear porn also is, it releases that same type of epinephrine shot, but it's almost like a psychological, mental epinephrine that keeps you wanting to come back for more and digging for more. Mm -hmm. And that can lead to adrenal fatigue, which enormously impacts the um, metabolism, the metabolic system of the body. Uh, so what you see when you're looking across society today, there is a lot of adrenal fatigue. And um, I can tell you that my mother called me and it, look, there's a squirrel out the window. Squirrel. Oh, my goodness. You just literally I had a squirrel squirreled. moment. I had a squirrel moment. <laughs> literally, we, we're, on, we're in the lower uh, level of our house, which is flush to the ground. The windows are flush to the ground. And there's snow on the ground, and it's spring. And literally, a squirrel just came and looked 
right in the window, like <laughs> a few inches from there the is. window pane. <laughs> he just came up and peeked in like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, I had my squirrel moment. <laughs> For those who know us well, usually we tease Joseph about being the squirrel in the family. He he likes to hide his little Whatever it might be. Whatever it is. <laughs> it could, sometimes it's my keys and <laughs> sometimes it's my memory. I don't know. So. <laughs> uh, anyway, so adrenal fatigue is pretty common. And um, my mother used to call me an adrenaline junkie, and she was right. But my adrenaline that I was seeking wasn't fear. It was conquering fears or uh, doing something excite, exciting or... Um, you know, skydiving, <laughs> things like that. Uh, that's those of us who've worked in emergency rooms for years. Uh, we are we get into that line of work because we recognize we are adrenaline junkies. But um, but fear porn fear is not a good adrenaline. Is not yeah. And when you see people who like to go to scary movies, that is a, quite possibly a fear addiction. And it's strange to think that we can have, people can have an addiction to fear, fearfulness. But see, in a movie, is fantasy and you feel like you've conquered it because you walk out alive. You know, but oftentimes that, I mean, fear can cause us to do so many things. Um, there's, there's a good fear and there's a bad fear, just like in the Hebrew language, there's a, there's a good and a bad. And we can see how a spirit of fear can cause uh, just horrendous damage in a, in a person's life spiritually mentally physically and then the good fear is the fear of the lord uh, but yeshua said to be anxious for nothing you know and and fear is a root of anxiety uh, which starts in the mind starts in the head and being anxious we're supposed to be anxious for nothing anxious for nothing we should not have a worry in the world wow can you imagine how, if we each really walked that out in our lives, how much people would be banging down the door of um, the collective figurative church or synagogues so that they could get some of that? You know, mm -hmm. worry permeates society. It's mm -hmm. just part of human nature. But if we could overcome that and be the example to the world of, you know, I'm not worried about it. It's in the Lord's hands. And and it's not saying that you're taking a lazadaisical, uh, you know, sera sera. Oh, it, it's not that you don't care uh, about about the things that you may be dealing with. You know, sometimes we're dealing with things because of our own consequences and the choices that we've made. But there is a a spirit that operates that is a actual spirit of fear, and uh, and we'll share the scripture with you about how to combat that spirit of fear. And how, how to walk with no anxiousness. It's, it's being able to walk through the fire and and uh, and come out refined, come out at peace while you're in the fire. You know, when people say, how can you, I know what you're going through, but how can you be going through this and you're such at peace? You have such a calm about you. And it's like, well, you know, we put it in the Lord's hands. And we're not perfect in this by far. I have to remind myself a good bit that... Worry is anti-faith. Mm -hmm. It is taking my my seeds of faith. The Lord gives each us each of us a measure of faith. But when when we sow the faith somewhere, it determines what we will reap. And so when we take our faith seeds and decide to plant them in the Lord's field and trust Him it reaps a, a harvest of a hundredfold. Mm -hmm. But when we take our seeds of faith and decide to plant them in the garden of doubt, that's when we have misused and misappropriated what the Lord has given us. And that's when that parable will come to, to pass where he says, even the little that you have, I'll take it away. And, and the, the word in Hebrew for faith is more it's better translated as trust. Mm -hmm. you know, it gives you just a, a clear depth of, of the absolute trust that you have that whatever situation you're going through is being brought to you by the enemy. Uh, and I think that that's a key point because oftentimes when the spirit of fear attacks, it's because of something that the, the kingdom of darkness is doing in your life to try to destroy your peace and to devour and kill whatever it may be a motivation. It may be uh, the Lord told you to do a business, or maybe it's 
uh, your calling into ministry, uh, the, all these things. Now, so there are there are keys that can help, especially with one another. And this is something that's done out of love, and that's Proverbs twelve twenty five, which says, "Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but an encouraging word makes it glad." Oh, seldom is heard an encouraging <laughs> word. Oh, boy. And my sky is cloudy all day. He's going to get out the Jew's harp. Here's a twang now reverberating through my bones. You know so, why I like the uh, word trust over faith? Faith to me sounds like Greek philosophical mind, mind exercises. You wanted to say babble. Something like that. <laughs> but uh, trust, trust has legs on it. Trust has action. Trust mm-hmm. has um, repercussions. You, you, you look at that icebreaker test they do with people collapsing blindly into other people's mm-hmm. arms. <laughs> trust. Well, and, and you know, uh, I mean, I'm sure many of us have done the trust game where one person is standing there. And you just fall backwards. That's what I'm talking about. You know, and so th- this this takes both elements of this proverb uh, of saying an encouraging word makes it glad. What's the person usually saying? It's okay. You can trust me. You can trust me. So the when you're standing there with your arms outstretched, are you trusting, or is it that moment that you decide to fall back? That there's a point of no return where you have to have 100% trust, knowing that God's going to catch you. Also, another way to look at it is um, confidence, Mm -hmm. trust and and confidence. How much confidence do you have in the Lord? How much confidence do you have in your God? And we instead, the world focuses on self-confidence. Oh, your self-confidence is low. It should be higher. No, actually not. (laughs) It shouldn't be higher. Stop trying to pump your ego up enough to believe in yourself Mm -hmm. and start putting your trust where it belongs in the Lord. Because without him, we are nothing. With him, we are everything. And it really doesn't matter what we are in the equation. It matters what he is. The less of us there is, the more of him there can be. And so empty out yourself. Stop focusing on yourself. Stop looking to build yourself up. Uh, Who cares if you're beautiful. Who cares if your body is perfect? Who cares if you have the right um, mental capacity for what you believe you need? You have you have been equipped with all of the raw ingredients to get to where the Lord wants you to be, so that He can use you. And what He wants you to be is is exactly what you're desiring and trying to do in your own strength. You know, only through Him will He mature us to be what we were created to be because he we know and he knows all of our flaws and, and imperfections but he knows how to polish those he knows how to woo us he knows how, how to how to break some of those things so it can be rebuilt uh so that we can be the better me that you're trying to be <laughs> so guess colossians 3 2 set your minds on things above not on things on the earth which is exactly what laurel is saying saying set your mind on him Renew your mind to the mind of Yeshua. You know, set your mind. I, I once heard somebody say, you're so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. That's a song, yeah. Is, is it a song? Okay, I didn't know it was a song, but I heard somebody say that. And I was like, that's that's ridiculous. You know, yes, be heavenly minded so you can be of some earthly good. But it also means get out there and be among the people and do something. So, I mean, we, we have to be able to... Um, live in a way that people can partake of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives through us. Um, so when Colossians 3 is, you know, set your mind on, on things above, not on things of the earth, is is a restatement of Isaiah 26.3. So um, a person whose desire rests in you, you preserve in perfect peace because he trusts you. Well, I think it's time for an herbal moment. Ooh, herbal moment! I have been neglecting them, and I am so sorry to our herbal lovers out there. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? Um, so, when we think about anxiety, there are a couple of herbs that just jump, jump to the forefront. Um, most people 
their mind is immediately going to go to Valerian route. No, it's not. It's not? No, I think most people are going to go, who knows, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, don't, here's my statement about Valerian root and anxiety. Make sure you need Valerian root because you do not need a hammer to kill a fly. <laughs> so your fly swatter for anxiety is going to be chamomile. Chamomile or, is good. Or some people say chamomile. Oh, there's a wonderful chamomile tea that we had in Israel. Oh, it was so yummy. Over there, like the flavors and, and everything is just like a hundred times better than, than anything you could find over here. Anyway. So what most people and what's mostly used is German chamomile. Roman chamomile has less uh, uses for than than the German. It's what you're used to seeing. German chamomile is little tiny flowers, and they are wonderful for many different things. They help with people who have allergies. So if you have seasonal allergies, they can help because they are um, reducing the amount of inflammation in the body and also overreactions of the immune system. Uh, oh, no, I didn't do the disclaimer. Go okay, ahead, we have it. to pause. Pause for the disclaimer. Uh, as you know, this is a bunch of baloney. All herbs are just evil, and the FDA knows everything, including that you should always turn to prescription drugs, right? To pharmacia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're choking on that one, good. Um, <laughs> I can good? do the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> uh, anyway, of course, this is not used to diagnose or treat any illness. You should go to your medical doctor to do that so that he can stick you on all kind of pharmaceutical drugs. Now, <laughs> back to our regular program and our herbal moment. So chamomile can be used as a tea for umbago? What? what? So for all you Spanish speaking people out there, um, umbago, uh, chamomile tea is good for those. I yeah. think you mean lumbago. Oh, which is okay. Lower back pain. Oh, because I know a lot of Spanish people pe speaking people out there going, "Oh, I can use chamomile for such and such." Umbago is a, a lazy person, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so it's lumbago. Okay, never lumbago, mind. Lumbago, back pain, yeah. Anyway. Well, some lazy people in your household can be a back pain. A pain in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Give them some chamomile head. tea. <laughs> uh, this is what happens when you try to Google search or you try to be a herbal master um, uh, over the internet. Uh, you get information like me. Well, that totally does not apply to this situation. Sorry. Uh, squirrel. <laughs> so, start with chamomile when you'd like to um, to just kind of stave off a little bit of anxiety. But let me tell you this. If you have got anxiety and you know that you need to um, have your mind put at peace, if you do not turn to the Lord first in prayer about it, then I believe it is idolatry to first go to your tea because if it's enough that it's agitating you and it's um, unsettling you this anxiety then we, we need to first turn to the Lord he needs to be the first thing that we look to because the scripture is sitting there saying we're going to um, we we need to put our mind on him so that we have peace now I believe that that's the key to all of it, but sometimes our physical body takes a little while to calm down, and I don't think there's anything wrong with having a cup of chamomile tea. Now, if you have to break out the heavy guns because you're really having some issues in life, um, valerian root's going to be helpful to you, and valerian root is, is going to be helpful also for your uh, difficulties sleeping you know, related to anxiety or related to um, nutritional issues because it increases the GABA levels in your brain, which is a neurotransmitter that, an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And 
um, when we increase that, it allows for much better sleep. Basically, you, you can see valerian as your uh, natural Valium, natural Xanax. So it has, um, it has a lot of, it's a heavy hitter out there. So break out those guns only when you, only when you need them. <laughs> Don't kill the fly with the hammer. That's, so, that concludes our herbal moment for the day. It is brought to you by Firekeepers International. We hope that you will go to our website, website firekeepersinternational.org we have a new platform for giving and we're uh, so if you've signed up if you're the few people out there who are kind enough and and blessing us with monthly donations we are so grateful thank you but you will need to sign up new because we're no longer working through paypal we're working through a new platform that uh, is better on bookkeeping and mm -hmm. um, you could also smoother. install it as a mobile app it's through givelify uh, it's also a, a company owned by believers uh, and uh, doesn't have the security issues that paypal has uh, so we definitely encourage you to uh, most of the website is set up already to where you can give through givelify uh, and so so look it up on, on our site and we thank you to all of our monthly donors and supporters uh, especially as we're coming in here to the spring season and the summer season where our, our outreach ministries really ramp up and our community outreaches onto the White Earth Reservation, uh, the children's ministry, uh, as well as ministry into the local population. Uh, we couldn't do any of those things if it wasn't for without you all. Uh, yes. so, so thank you for, for the blessings. And, and we ask Creator's blessings a hundredfold on all of you who have supported this ministry financially and through your intercession and prayers. And so if, if you would pray about giving maybe 25 bucks a month, even 10, whatever it is, it's not too little. It's all helpful. Mm -hmm. And it puts us in relationship together when you either pray for us, when you give your 10 or 15 bucks a month, when you, um, when you engage with us, when you listen to the radio show. We hope we're blessing you. And um, we also want to give you that opportunity to bless us in return. Mm -hmm. We thank you. So let's, let's look at First Peter uh, 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Casting the whole of your care, which is all of your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all. I mean, that casting is a picture somebody throwing a football or throwing a baseball or, you know, I mean, you, it's, you are throwing it with force. You are throwing it with no expectation of receiving it back. You are getting rid of it. You are just absolutely just chunking it out there. Uh, that's what that word casting in the Greek is. So casting the whole of your care on him, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Okay. Uh, I know I am not the only one out here. There, there are others. And so I'm just going to say, unfortunately, my casting, my casting is what happens with a... Uh, a fishing, a, fishing rod. Rod. <laughs> a fishing rod. I cast it as far as I can, and all of a sudden, at some point, I realize that hook is way, is right underneath me, practically. <laughs> and so I have to reel it back in and cast it out again. And you catch a turtle. It, yes, I do. I'm a turtle catcher. I don't catch fish, usually. <laughs> um, I do catch myself occasionally. That's not fun. You caught me. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm the fisher of men. <laughs> well, I got mine, but, and Father, we pray for those out there who are still casting their lines. We ask mm. you to help them cast it on the right side of the boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, I'll say, Lord, I'm giving this to you. I'm putting it in your hands. And then I'll find myself maybe sometime later, whether it's, an hour later, the next day, the next week, whatever it is, thinking about it again. But, you know, he's in the process of renewing our mind. That's an ongoing thing. And so every time you find yourself worrying about it again, having a little anxiety about it, uh, you want to use 
you want to go back again and say, Father, I'm putting this in your hands again. Please help me not to pick it back up. Help the enemy not to come and try to bring it to me. Mm -hmm. Keep it there. But you'll notice a decrease over time. Maybe it's in the beginning every hour. Maybe after a while it's once half a day. And it really is that simple. It's as simple as saying, Abba, Father, I just... I place this, insert whatever the worry or anxiety is, whether it's the bill that needs to be paid or the mortgage or the electricity or the car repair, whatever it is. Just the salvation of, the a, salvation loved of a loved one, the healing of whatever it is. Take that care and just say, Lord, I place it at your throne. I, I trust you completely with this anxiety that I have. I just place it before you because you've told me to, to cast my burdens upon you. It's that simple. Just say, Lord, I cast this burden upon you. You can say it right now as you're listening to this. Just whatever that burden is, and just place it before his throne. And tell tell him, I trust you. I trust your perfect will in this situation. And that's what we need to pray for. Is not your will be done. And I'm saying you as in your, your personal. But his will be done. His perfect will be done. Not his permissible will either. Right? This is key. Ask for his perfect will to be done concerning the anxiety and those cares that you're placing before his throne. And you watch how quick that situation will begin to dissipate. One of the things that helps me overcome anxiety is when I review a situation that I thought was turning out poorly, and the Lord shows me why it needed to go that way. Sometimes if I think, well, you know, it didn't really come through the way that I thought it was going to. Then he shows me his hand at work. No, because if if it had come through the way you wanted it to, then I wouldn't have been able to let you encounter this person who you witnessed to, and you sowed seeds of, of faith into their lives. And somebody else will come behind you to water them. Or, you know, you wouldn't have been able to encounter that person and share with them the love that they needed to experience at that time. Mm-hmm. And so, just because it doesn't work out exactly the way that you want it to, or you see fit, does not mean that the Lord isn't operating in your life. If you give Him the freedom to do so, He will operate in your life. Mm-hmm. It's it's a promise. We find in Joshua 1 verse 9, this is a commandment. This is a command. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for Yahweh your Elohim is with you wherever you go. Now imagine the situation behind that scripture. He's not just talking about, oh no, you might, you know. You might not be be, able to pay this bill. Yeah, don't be scared that you're not going to have electricity. No, he's talking about, I'm going to ask you to rush into a mob of giants and kill them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. You, a mob you, of giants, an army. You're the size of a cricket in the eyes of these gigantic people. And, yeah, I want you to go and fight them and not be afraid, have total trust. But you know what? He said this to Yahashua. Right? Yahashua and, and Caleb were the only two that came back with a report that said, we can take them. But even still, the Lord commanded them. Even though they came back saying, we can take them with Yahweh Elohim on our side, we can take these giants down. But still the Lord had to command them to not be afraid. Because in the natural, you're still going to fear. Right? Can you imagine going up into battle, you know, seven, eight foot tall you know, uh, Canaanites that, that, that you're fighting with? You just came out of uh, centuries of uh, slavery. You know, it took the Israelites uh, some time to learn how to be warriors and fight. Which is also part of the reason why they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Yeah, and so some of you out there are saying, how in the world could I be... To the point where I would not be afraid to rush into a battle against an army of giants. And the only way we can do that is spiritual warfare first. Mm -hmm. We have to say, first to ourselves, we need to say, I will submit to the word of the Lord. And he commands me to be strong and of good courage. So, speak to your soul like David did. Mm -hmm. You know, he commanded his soul to bless the Lord. Well, you can command yourself to obey the Lord. Soul, you will be in a submission to the word of God. And then you say, I will, you know, fear, 
the spirit of fear be bound in the name of Yeshua. You are bound and cast away from me. And that space must be filled by the Ruach HaKodesh mm -hmm. and the authority of Yeshua the Messiah. And when that happens, that spirit of fear has to obey that name and authority of Yeshua. You know, and sometimes, sometimes <laughs> Creator will bring a Goliath into your life. He'll bring a giant into your life so that you could find the David within you. So don't be afraid. Be strong. You have the King of Kings. There's a verse in Exodus that says Yahweh is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. You have Yahweh Sevaot, the Lord of Heaven's armies. You are, you, you are indestructible through him. because, And I say indestructible. Why? Because our eternal spirit is going to go to dwell to be with him. So when I say you are indestructible, our flesh is just temporary. Who cares about our flesh? Right? You, you destroy our flesh, you just freed us. So you are indestructible in him. Right? You can do all things through Mashiach who gives you dunamos, power. I have been surprised how many believers struggle with a fear of death. And, you know, I'll, I'll just tell you, brothers and sisters, I have faced death more than anybody I know that's my age. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of other people out there who face death more. I, I'm sure there are. I just don't know them. Um, and I'll tell you, it. You know, of course, when when the moment's there, your heart's racing and, and pounding. But one of the things, thank you, Father, that I don't struggle with is a fear of death. I know that... Um, I feel like I'm already here on borrowed time in the first place. And when when we can, if this is an issue for you, if you fear death, let's pray for that right now. Father, I ask you that you would deliver your children from fear of death, that they would not be scared or nervous, that death would not create fear within them. You, Father, are the only thing that should be feared. And so I ask you that you would right now, in the name of Yeshua, bring deliverance over mindsets, over over spiritual trauma and, and emotional physical, shackles. That you would break that right now in the name of Yeshua. That never again would this be able to plague our brothers and sisters. That, Father, you will prepare them for whatever death that you desire for them to have, or no death at all, if you should come before that time. And, Father, we ask you that you would instead replace it with a peace that passes all understanding. Because we all have, brethren, we all have a time to live and a time to die. And the only thing, if we finish the race that's on, waiting for us on the other side is something closer to him than what we have now. And so that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And just do all that you can to prepare physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and your mind will be at rest. I mean, what's the worst the enemy can do to us? Our God is stronger. Absolutely. He is able. He is absolutely able. So all the fear, all the anxiety, all the worries, you know, that spirit, that spirit of fear uh, does work hand in hand with the spirit of heaviness. The scripture tells us to put on the garments of praise for heaviness. Because right, sometimes you, you, these spirits work together. They're, they're like shock troops. Uh, so often if you're, if you're battling with that spirit of, of anxiety, uh, there's also a spirit of heaviness that's attached to that. Uh, that's where we get depression from. That's where we get that weighty feeling of, um, you know, nothing's going right. I mean, it's, it's just it's a detrimental spirit. Put on some praise and worship music. When you get up in the morning or if you're not already playing it, uh, put on a radio station. Uh, you know, it, it could be online. We have so many resources available uh, that can, that can help in the dismantling of the kingdom of darkness is sound waves that are permeating through the atmosphere because there is a battle taking place in the heavenlies. There's a battle taking place with sound uh, and, and that sound of victory, that sound of praise, that sound of worship that changes the atmosphere, that brings God's presence will absolutely 
make that spirit of heaviness go. And you know what the spirit of heaviness is? It is the counterfeit. It is the kingdom of darkness, of the heaviness, the kavod, the shikanah of Yah. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about the spirit of heaviness and depression is that people may, people almost want to keep it. It, it, makes, it becomes a it familiar spirit. You, it wraps you like a warm blanket. It's a snake. And that warm blanket begins to feel comfortable because it works hand in hand with loneliness. And therefore, you're not, quote, lonely anymore. You have this spirit of heaviness that you can feel nearby. And so that's how it tricks you. That's how that spirit tricks you into wanting it to stay and keeping you isolated right there i mean there's more reasons to why we're not supposed to forsake the assembling of the saints one the context of that uh is talking about the moedim the shabbats and the feasts uh but also just getting together with others if that spirit of heaviness and that spirit of anxiety is keeping you from being with your brothers and sisters who can pray for you who can edify you who can speak words of life over you that's another reason why we're not supposed to forsake the gathering there's some of you listening to this that may be battling this and may be dealing with this anxiety and fear. Maybe you've been hurt by the church before or a certain fellowship or home group. You know, well, folks, let me tell you, sheep bite. That's something that we've learned from pastoring. All right, but did that, does that stop us? No, because hurt people hurt people. But you may be in a place where Satan is keeping you isolated. The trickster is keeping you isolated so that you are just stuck in this eternal hole of darkness but it and only anxiety. Seems, it only seems eternal. It's but not. it only seems it. Exactly. Exactly. You have the authority to, to take command of that. You have the authority to get with other believers. You know, we, we, have to, we have to connect with the body. There's no unity in the body if you're sitting at home by yourself or in your room or not wanting to get out, not wanting to leave, not wanting to go to the service, not wanting to go to the Bible study, not wanting to, not wanting to, not wanting to. Insert whatever justification or excuse you may have for being disobedient. But let me tell you that when you get out there, when you connect, when you're with other like-minded believers, you know, and it may be that maybe you've outgrown or maybe the Lord has somebody else or somewhere else for you to go. All you have to do is say, Lord, bring in the people that, that you have for me to learn from, to fellowship with, uh, to, 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 to be able to midrash, to be able to talk scripture about with, to, who are going to love me unconditionally. You know, and that's what we all want. Uh, and which is also the ultimate fulfillment of Torah. So if the problem with you uh, not being able to fellowship and gather with like-minded people has to do with nobody in your area, let me tell you, there there's going to be somebody in your area. And if you don't know how to find them, I would suggest that you go to 119ministries.com and they have under resources... Click on the tab that says resources, and then there's a menu that gives you fellowship finder. And on the fellowship finder, you can you can look up your area to see. Um, they've you can either create a new listing, or you can look up other people's listing to find mm -hmm. those who are uh, anywhere near you that have like-minded Torah-based. Um, biblical roots, biblical, Hebraic roots. Biblical, whole Bible concepts. Well, I, I would love to see a time-lapse photography of how this has grown. You know, I mean, from 12, 13 years ago when people thought we were crazy and that we had lost our faith and and uh, all these accusations of this and that. and to, Some have been in it since the 60s. Yeah, yeah to where now this is, this is glowing gro globally. Um, and I'm talking, you know, kind of like switching gears here to the whole biblical roots to break understanding of scripture, which folks, if it's something that you're just learning or starting to learn about, or you're not sure about, uh, just pray that the Ruach HaKodesh leads you uh, to the right ministry and the right place for, for sound biblical teaching. But we can tell you this, this is a prophesied move of God. Uh, it talks about it in scripture. And we believe that this is, this is one of the last prophesied moves of God that's going to usher in the coming of Mashiach. Because the bride is being prepared, the spots and wrinkles, a Hebrew idiom for false teachings and false, false doctrines, are being ironed out of her dress, out of the bride's dress, in preparation for the bridegroom to come. 
Now, there's another option. It's not ideal, but um, you know, in in the interim between now and the time you find a fellowship or home gathering, there's um, there are online streams, live streaming. We're going to attempt it. <laughs> we are about to try to attempt it with a Firekeepers Fellowship. That is so scary. I have so many f- insert foot and mouth moments like I they did know, last Shabbat. I know. You're going to have to keep praying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to have to not be anxious now. <laughs> be anxious for nothing, honey. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I think we have a very forgiving group of people out there Uh they have. They are required to forgive us seventy times seven. <laughs> so that means after about seventy weeks or so, we're out of. We're just, you know, we might be up a creek, but <laughs> but at least until then, we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so when we, we're when we what we're gonna do? Go to Firekeepers Fellowship on Facebook, not our personal Facebook pages, but Firekeepers Fellowship. And we were we're going to attempt to do live streaming through that web or through that Facebook page. Yeah, keep just the best thing to do is keep watch through our Facebook. Um, I, I'm going to figure out some way to, to live stream. I was able to do it last year. Uh, actually, I was able to do a YouTube live stream that might be the best option for us. But uh, just keep keep watch on our on our website and also on our Facebook pages for the updates on. The attempted live stream, the Shabbat. <laughs> and that's, you know, we were really glad that one of our um, one of our friends suggested that to us because the live streaming that we've seen elsewhere is very expensive. The equipment is costly. And um, we thought, well, that's not for now. But when they suggested Facebook Live, I felt like a V8 commercial where I'm <laughs> doing the face palm and going, I, I should have thought of that eons ago. <laughs> But so we're grateful. Yeah, we're going to try one of those two avenues, either the YouTube or Facebook Live. So in wrapping this up, you know, the anxiety issue, yes, be informed, understand out there what's going on in the world. But this is exciting times, you guys. We're living in times that the Bible spoke about. There were hundreds of years that the Bible really didn't have much to say. You know, the Dark Ages and... The Renaissance period, really, there wasn't a whole lot to say about those times. It was just waiting until now we're living in times where we're seeing prophecy actually fulfilled. Mm -hmm. This is exciting, and it's an honor to be living in a time like this. So be encouraged, and don't allow yourself to focus on the negative Make sure that although you need to know the negative and be informed about it, that your your meditations, your dwelling, your mind is sitting inside the beautifulness of your Father. In heavenly places. Because when your mind is in heavenly places, you will be earthly good because it will be on earth as it is in heaven. So be the light of Yeshua, be the love of Yeshua, be the love of the Father of Abba, um, be empowered and filled with the Ruach HaKodesh to walk out his commandments and, and be that light unto the world. Hey, I want to invite you guys before we go to please sign up for our newsletter. Keep in touch with us. There are things that the Lord um, wants us to partner with people on. Some people have a burden for Native ministries and um, and Native people. Some people just have a love for, for truth and Torah. And so we send out a monthly newsletter. We try not to drown people with um, too much mail. But we would like for you to... um, Know what the Lord's doing in Indian country. Yeah, and... And on the reservations. And and beyond. You Mm -hmm. know, we don't just minister to Native people. That way, you'll know how to pray for us. And um, we can... We'll know who you are because you're on... (laughs) You know, a little bit familiar. We'll try to keep up with you too we want to build relationship here Mm -hmm. so So, heavenly father we just bless you we thank you for this time we thank you for your ruach hakodesh and we thank you that for for because we know your word says that you do not give us a spirit of fear but a, a, a sound mind father so we thank you we bless you for that we speak your word over people listening right now sound mind and love a renewed mind of the mashiach 
because the spirit of fear has no control and no power over the lives of those listening to the stream as of right now in Yeshua's name. And we bless you, Father. We ask you for that that you would give us your peace so abundantly that it would pour out, spill out onto the lives of others around us, that they would know you and the effects you have on the mind and the soul and the heart and the spirit. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Yeah.